In the previous lecture, we have learned about how to calculate deflections of a beam at a certain point using the principle of superposition. In this method, we basically do three main steps. In the first step, we split the loading of the structure into simpler parts to those parts that we can find the deflection in the table. In the second step, we determine deflection caused by each loading at the required point. Again, we go to the table, find the appropriate figure, read the value from the table, then plug the values into that equation to determine how much is the deflection of a beam at a certain point. And in the last step, we determine total deflection at that point by adding the deflection caused by each of these loadings. Alright? This is what we call as method of superposition to determine deflection of beams. This is the technique that we have used for solving this problem. We can use this technique for solving this problem or this one or that one. In all these problems, the load is split into simpler parts, but we don't change the restraints. So there is one important fact, there is one important note. Restraints of these structures remain unchanged in all of these studied problems. Now let's consider this structure. This structure is not a simply supported beam because the ruler support is not located at the right part of this beam. So if I want to determine the flexion of this beam, say at point D, which is located on the right part, there is no similar figure in the table that I can go and pick up a value. Look at the tables that we have. This table shows the flexion of cantilever beams and this table shows deflection in simply supported beams. But if I get back to this problem, this structure is not similar to those figures that we can find in the table. So what we can do for this problem? How we can solve that? This is actually the topic of our study today. So this section discusses how to determine deflection in beams that requires splitting the structure into a cantilever beam and a simply supported beam. We will talk about two different situations, like how to calculate deflection on a cantilever beam, like the point shown on the right part of that, or how to calculate deflection in the simply supported beam, in this figure somewhere between A and C. To understand the concept better, let's solve a problem. Alright, look at this structure. A loading P is applied at point B, the structure is restrained at A by a pen support, and at C by a roller support. The problem looks for how much is the value of deflection in this beam at two points, point B and point D. In this problem, we assume the modulus of elasticity of this beam multiplied by moment of inertia of the section is constant, and that's equal to 2200 kips times feet squared. The length of the beam from A to B is 2 feet, from B to C is 4 feet, and from C to D is 2 feet, and the loading applied to this structure at point B is equal to 12 kips. And again, we want to determine deflection at point B and at point D. Let's talk about deflection at point B, because that would be easier. To determine deflection at point B, we need to split our structure into simpler parts. In this case, there is not any loading acting on the right part, so I can simply ignore that part and remove the part of the structure from C to D and consider the simply supported beam like this. If this beam is subjected to load P as shown in the figure, it deforms like this. And we can determine how much is the value of deflection at point B. To determine that, we need to go to the table and pick up appropriate equation. So this is case number two as shown in this figure. And the value of deflection at x equal to a can be calculated from this equation. Deflection is pa squared b squared divided by 3lei. a is distance of force to the left part of the structure, b is distance of the force to the right part of the structure, and l is the overall length of the beam. Alright, let's write it down here. Value of a is distance of that force to the left, which in this case is equal to l sub ab, which is 2 feet. 
B is distance of the force to the right part of that uh, simply supported beam, which in this case is equal to L sub BC, and that's equal to 4 feet. The total length of the beam is uh, 4 plus 2, which is 6 feet, and I can plug the values into that equation and determine how much, determine how much is the deflection. Force is 12 kips, A is 2, B is 4, L is 6, and EI is 2200 kips feet squared. In this problem, because all the forces and the length are in kips and feet, I don't need to change them into inch and uh, pound. So I, I'm going to keep the units. And if I do the calculation, that gives the value of deflection at that point equal to 0 0.01939, and the unit will be in feet. Regarding the direction of the applied load, the beam deflects downward, and this value is actually deflection of beam, which goes downward at point B. All right, so what we have determined so far is deflection of the simply supported beam at point B. But how we can calculate deflection of beam at point D? To determine that, we need to figure out how the right part of this structure moves when load P is applied on the simply supported part. There is one important note here. There is not any loading acting on the right part of that beam. So the beam at the right part is not bending. It remains as a straight line. So I can say this is how the beam deforms at the right part. To determine that deflection regarding the fact that the beam is not bending on the right part and it remains as a straight line, I can use trigonometric equation for determining the value of deflection at point D on the right part. So first we need to see how much is the slope of this beam at point C on the ruler support Let's call that theta 2. Then we can establish a relation between theta 2 and delta d on the right part of that structure. OK, let's do that. First, we need to determine how much is the slope of that beam at point C. We need to get back to the table and determine how much is the slope of this beam at the right part. Here, the value of slope on the right part is shown by theta 2. And I need to pick up this equation. Theta 2 is PA times L squared minus A squared divided by 6LEI. Now look at this triangle carefully. Tangent of theta 2 and this triangle is equal to delta D divided by length of the cantilever beam from C to D, which is L sub CD. Tangent of theta 2 is equal to delta D over L CD. However, because the slope of this beam is very small, I, I can say tangent of theta 2 is equal to theta 2, and that would be equal to delta D over L sub CD, and from that I can determine how much is the value of delta D. So delta D would be equal to theta 2 times L CD. Note that I ignored tangent here because I assume that the value of slope is very small. The value of that angle is very small. But if you calculate the value using the tangent, you will get the same number. All right, theta 2 is 0 0.0097 radian, and LCD is 2 feet, and that gives us the value of deflection on the right part of the beam equal to 0 0.0194 feet. This deflection is upward because if load P is applied at the middle of that simply supported beam, the right part of the structure goes up. So that would be the answer of this problem at point D. All right, let me review some basic concepts here. To determine the value of deflection of this beam at the right end, we have noticed that there is not any load acting on the right part, but this beam deflects at the right part because of the slope of this beam at point C. To determine the upward deflection of that beam at the right end, we use trigonometric equation. We say tangent of theta is equal to delta D divided by LCD. And if we determine how much is theta 2, we would be able to determine how much is the upward deflection of that beam at that point. This is what we call it as indirect deflection. Why? Because there is not any direct load acting on the right part of this structure, but this beam deflects on that part indirectly 
because of load on the simply supported beam. That is a big difference between the problems that we are talking about today compared to the problems that we discussed in the previous lectures. Alright?